Today, a new SPAC is born in the 200 million US dollar IPO on the NASDAQ and with the goal of further disrupting the digital infrastructure space. IAX Acquisition Corp is a blank check company whose business purpose is to effect a merger, capital stock exchange, asset acquisition, stock purchase, reorganization, or similar business combination with one or more businesses. Joining me now is Chairman Guy Wilner and CEO Karen Batt. Um, and first, thank you guys for coming on the screen. I mean, how long has this been in the making and how is IX Acquisition Corp different from everything else we've seen so far in the data center space? So it's been in the making for quite a few months uh, for all sorts of reasons, bringing the team together, the SPAC market, NASDAQ market, et cetera, and the summer. Um, and why, well, actually the first question is why are we doing this and why are we doing it now? Um, we're doing it because we can see some fabulous businesses around the world that need access to intelligent, supportive capital. And doing a SPAC on NASDAQ means we we'll all bring these two things together, great business, and we can bring the, uh, that intelligent capital together. Hmm. Okay. And um, I mean, the, the offer co closes on October the 12th as well. What happens on that day? Um, so essentially, we are then, we're, we're IPO'd as of today. We've just got a little bit more money in the bank uh, by the 12th. Uh, and then what we're doing is looking for a, a one business to acquire. And actually, I didn't ask you first, answer your first question about why we're different. It's all about the team. It's the team, it's the team, it's the team. Um, so we've built a team of 16 people. That's exec directors, non-exec uh, directors and advisors. And between those 16 people, we have a deep, deep operational experience within tech, tech infrastructure and telecoms globally. We cover every function of a business. We cover regions around the world. Our little books are huge. Those professional or personal networks are huge. And therefore we can really add value to the business that we acquire. And we'll add value to the investors saying, okay, you know, the, the business we're, we're buying, we get it, we understand it, we're going to stand by it, we understand their strategy, we're behind the way we think they can execute it, and we're behind it. And uh, going back to that sort of um, team philosophy and why we've got a flamingo on our logo is all around we're a long term partner to the business and to the investors. Flamingos are known for creating uh, long lifetime relationships in their lives. And that's why we have a logo as a flamingo. Hmm. And Guy, I guess it was you that thought of the flamingo because we went from mammoths and elephants to, um, to flamingos now. <laughs> oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah, no, I wish I could take credit for that. But no, it wasn't. No, yeah, it's true. We had elephants and mammoths for uh, uh, my Russian and Kenyan businesses. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it it know, was that's... Noah. Noah, our CFO, came up with the flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And um, but I mean, why did you go for Nasdaq? Because I believe you're a London based SPAC now, or correct me if I'm wrong. So, where where so are you based? Why did you go for Nasdaq? Well, it's an interesting question, especially with, with us all working from home and COVID. So essentially, the, that, that team of 16 goes from Sao Paulo to Hong Kong to Karachi to Amsterdam. We are really, truly, truly global, East Coast, West Coast, US. So technically, we had to give an address, and it's London. There are a few of us in, in the UK, but we are truly a global team. Mm. Why NASDAQ? I mean, if, if you're going to list, um, you, what are you looking for? You're looking for an exchange that has deep capital pockets. You're looking for investors that understand tech. Uh, and NASDAQ has those two in, in oodles. Uh, and then if you think about what a SPAC does, a SPAC makes one acquisition and that business then grows. And either that can do happen organically or it can happen via M&A. And the, the depth of equity in, in, or depth of funding generally in the US is huge. So if you're a NASDAQ listed entity, you've always got access to that equity. equity. You've got much better access to debt funding at more volume at a lower cost. And you, know, you can really probably do a fifth of your coupon rate for some countries. And if you have got an M&A strategy and you want to give paper, you're talking to a target and saying, OK, do you want NASDAQ paper or do you want another exchange's paper? Which one's going to give more credibility? We think it's NASDAQ. Hmm. OK, so by being in NASDAQ, that, that doesn't put you behind in terms of if you want to invest in Asia, if you want to invest in Africa. Um, I mean, what sort of geographies are you going for? And um, Guy, maybe for you as well, um, is there any relation between IX acquisition with IX Accelerate and IX Africa? Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be asking, scratching their heads this morning, be like, is this another one part of the group or 
What is it? <laughs> you know, uh, it's just uh, a little branding that we've had, you know, since uh, Karen and I were, you know, I actually were right back in the day and, and that started off in 99. Uh, we just thought we'd carry on the whole, you know, continuity thing. So there's no, there's no connection between any of them, IX Africa and Accelerate uh, have totally different shareholders as well. So one's in Russia and one's in Kenya. Um, they both happen to be hyperscale data centers, but that's, you know, that's, that's another subject. In terms of geography, yeah, we're looking at, you know, right the way from, as Karen said, right the way from Brazil to, you know, to through Sub-Saharan Africa to uh, Southeast Asia, coming, swinging back through Eastern Europe, Europe. So it's basically non-US non um, is, what, is what we're looking at. And we're, you know, interested in businesses with solid revenues, so we're not going for the sky high stuff. And, um, you know, hopefully dollarized or euro pegged um, as well to give stability into that uh, into that market but the whole internet infrastructure market is a it's a recurring revenue business you know it's a, it's a solid uh stable linear growth type market which which has got many years ahead of it okay is it would it be kind of correct to say that you're going to you're basically an emerging market spac yeah essentially i mean that, that definition of emerging markets is very broad so we yeah. could buy something in, in france or germany and you know there are not many people that would call that emerging markets so that that definition is very broad so europe asia emerging markets um and, and just going back to the, what guy was talking about the, the connections between the teams there's technically there aren't but actually the one connection is is team relationships so some of the advisors, Guy and I have been working with for 20 years, 15 years. So we've got the likes of Andrew Bartley, who was with the World Bank IFC, who's been investing in emerging markets and tech around the world for the last 26 years. Um, and he was, for example, on the board of I Accelerate with both Guy and I in, in Moscow. So there's lots of deep connections within the team. And, and as you know, you go back to working with the people that you trust and you, you enjoy working with and you know are in for the long term. And you can build amazing things. Um, and I mean, speaking of building, you're now trying to raise 200 million. I think there's another 30 million that you might raise, I think. Um, I mean, what's the plans in terms of capital raising? Um, are you going to stop here? Are you willing to go for more? Like, do you have a certain goal in mind? Um, so the way, the way a SPAC works is you kind of have two main rounds of funding. So the first one is this IPO. And essentially, we've raised this 200 million. And on, on Tuesday, we closed down to, to um, potential of $230 million. Then when you find a business to acquire, you create what this is traditionally SPACs have actually been around 20 years. There's been a bit of a bit of a bit over the last year, but actually they've been around a long time. So you create something called a pipe, which is a private investment in public equities, and you raise money as part of that um, acquisition process. So that will only happen when we know what we're acquiring. Hmm. Okay. And um, I mean, how are you going to incentivate and compensate your, your sponsors? What, what's in it for the sponsors? So um, th there's no salaries or anything exciting <laughs> like that. And there's no private jet. At least um, not for now. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. No private jet. <laughs> um, and the 230 million essentially goes into a trust account. So we can't even use it for a private jet. Um, but uh, we get compensated via the shares that we created at the beginning as part of this process. So that's the founder shares and we're part of that. We've subscribed to that, um, put our own money at risk. And uh, yeah, that's how we incentivize. But to go back to that key message, this is long term growth focused. Hmm. So this is about buying a business that's got really great, good growth prospects and that share price goes up over the next few years. It's, it's not about flipping out and taking money next week. Yeah, no, no, it's a long-term commitment. Um, I mean, are there any risks to what you're doing? Are there any risks associated with SPACs? Um, I guess well, there's there's lots of risks of, of being a, a public company, um, just all the normal things. A SPAC, there are ups and downs of reputations, but actually we still think it's an amazing tool to bring good businesses to the market. Um, because of the so many uh, SPACs have gone live in the last year or so, there are going to be ones that have, uh, aren't going to do so well. So you know, there will always be a reputational risk there for some um, for some of them. But actually, if you acquire a really good business, there isn't an issue. Um, and then it's just around being a public listed entity. You know, you, you've got to stand by what you say and deliver and have that really good governance. And not every company is ready to be a listed company. Mm -hmm. If you look at the the advantage of the SPAC versus a normal IPO process, the SPAC gives you certainty of pricing. So basically, once you've had your agreement, you've got 
Uh, you've already got your financing in place. You've already got your valuation there. And you're just finishing off your, your documentation to get out there. Um, and there's a SPAC versus another PE round, for example, especially for like founders in, in businesses. Um, being on NASDAQ or being publicly quoted gives you paper. So you can make acquisitions much easier. It's very, very difficult for private companies to buy other private companies because they have to raise capital based on what valuation it's all very subjective. Whereas if you're on the market, your valuation is the paper you've got. You can give paper to your, uh, to your targets and, and merge them in. You can also access debt at a much lower interest rate than you would were you private. So there's many, many reasons why uh, a SPAC is very attractive, especially to sort of founder managers of you know, larger larger businesses. And we're talking about sort of one, two, three billion dollar, maybe four, five billion dollar businesses. Mm, okay. well, and, yeah. and I was just going to add to that sort of we, you know, in many ways that team of 16 de-risks because if you do an IPO without that team around you, you are learning learning as you go, you're learning that governance, you're learning to that growth. When you've got the SMAC team that is this focused and so behind you, actually you're reducing the risk of, of going forward. Okay, well, that, that all makes a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, my last question was going to be around the pink flamingo, but we've already answered those questions. Um, so let me change that to what else have you got up your sleeves? Um, it could be related to this SPAC, it could be some other projects that you've got coming up. Um, you've been launching things over the years, like several times, so you definitely have something um, up your sleeves. It's just how much can you tell us of what's next? Guy, are you going first or shall I? <laughs> Pass on the hot potato. <laughs> Yeah. Go which is, you know, the, the accelerator, which is doing incredibly well, and there's lots of interest. You know, we're constantly raising capital for that business, and we're likely to really start expanding uh, even more uh, 2022 23. So, we're now the number two player in the Russian Federation, which is the largest internet market in Europe. So, it's a big, big beast now. Uh, fantastic, fantastic team. You know, our CEO used to run Iron Mountain in Russia, so, he really knows his stuff. And, um, and Kenya, where we're just, you know, the buildings come out of the ground, we're going to be hitting the road with uh, hyperscale data center in Q1. Um, that's a fantastic project and a lovely little team there. I was out there last week, uh, so I'm actually beginning to travel, which is nice. Um, but yeah, you know, there's all sorts of other things that we're, we're, we're looking at as, you know, as we've got such a global network, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. And, and as for me, I'm, you know, we are putting the time we need to do into the SPAC to make this happen, to make it successful. I'm also chairman, non-exec on a few other businesses that are smaller, practically all tech or tech enabled. Um, and the only thing Guy didn't mention that he has recently been on the BBC News about uh, interviewing about his electric Land Rover. Oh. <laughs> That's a whole other topic. <laughs> watch, watch, the, watch BBC, ITV or CBS on uh, London Electric Cars. It's a little company that converts uh, classic cars to electric. So, yeah, <laughs> my little hobby. I mean, and you're also playing your band last night. Um, so the I eve played double bass night. last night, which terrified me far more than any IPO could ever do. Yeah, because <laughs> what else do you do on the on the night before you launch? It's back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, but Karen Back and uh, Guy Wilner, both of IX Co uh, Acquisition Corporate. Um, thank you for talking to me. And it's always exciting to see such shakeups in the market as well. Um, and for you at home, thank you for watching. And do check our website and give us a follow on our social media for more breaking and timely news from across the digital infrastructure sector worldwide. At the Tech Capital, you lead, we report. Bye for now.